bell. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts of five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Fire, fire. Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the demon of fire. In just a minute, we'll move to the scene of the flash fire that has gutted the second floor of the Mechanical Standards Building and threatens to bring all three floors tumbling down into the basement where Mr. Lawley is trapped in the records vault. We'll go as soon as you've heard this message. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to the street outside the Mechanical Standards Company building where Tim Collins, on his first run to a fire with the rescue company, is trying to get important information from E.B. Hewitt, president of Mechanical Standards. Now, Mr. Hewitt, just try to give it to me straight. This man, this Mr. Lawley, he carried your company's records down to the vault in the basement, right? And now he's locked in. So how can we get at him? How can we get him out? And as Tim Collins gets from Mr. Hewitt the facts he needs to plan his rescue of the trapped man in the basement vault, Chief Cody shouts out. All companies, get your men out of that second floor. Hold them out. The phone generator is ready for operation, Chief. Good. Can you spare men to stand by in case we need that phone? I'd rather not, Chief. My boys are going into the basement after that fellow in the vault. What? Haven't they started yet? Smokey McBride went in with cover to locate the vault. What's keeping them? Why isn't that man on his way out? Foxy Collins is getting the dope we need from Mr. Hewitt. What dope? And how the vault is set up, so we we'll know how to break in without losing any more time. Okay, then have Lieutenant Greenspan take over operation of the phone generator. Yes, sir. Tell him to stand by to cover that gasoline stored in the basement. If that second floor is going to collapse and the whole building falls into the cellar, Greenspan can keep your boys from frying in the gasoline fire. Okay, Chief. 209. Orders for company to move. You hose men, rig pipes on the area ladders. Give me water towers. Flood that second floor from outside. All engine companies, mount your deck pipes in the street and your turret guns. Aim at those windows. Flood that second floor. Give me every gallon of water you can pump. Now, as Captain Jellybone returns to his field headquarters at the rescue wagon, after transferring command of his foam generator to Lieutenant Greenspan, Tim Collins here. I've got it! Captain Jellybone, I've got the dope we need. All set, Hooksy, what's the layout? Well, this vault, Captain. It's a big room down in the basement. A room with concrete walls two feet thick, reinforced with metal rods. Well, we never cut through those walls, Collins. No, sir. Not in time to save that man inside. How about the door? Heavy metal, sir. Stronger than the walls. And it's locked tight now because the lock is some kind of electric mechanism. Rex running with electricity. Yes, sir. And the electricity is turned off. But there's a window, sir. A window that opens from the vault into the corridor. A window? Yes, sir. A glass in a room built? To resist anything but an earthquake? Well, Hewitt says they have a window to let in air, sir. Oh. Because sometimes they work there in the vault on those precious records of theirs. But the thing is... The thing is, there's a window. And that's how we got to get the man inside. Come on, Collins. But, we'll... Captain. No time to waste, boy. Captain. Captain. The window, Captain, is made of shatterproof glass. From outside, it's protected with iron bars. We'll have to cut our way in. Iron bars, eh? Well, that means we'll need the cutting torch. Yes, sir, and I'll need help to carry the gas tanks, Captain. Uh, we can manage them between us, Hooksy. Yep. But you, you're going in, sir? Cobble and Smokehead are in there already. Of course I'm going in, boy. If that second floor comes down, we'll pull each other out. Uh, Come on, unship that oxygen tank from the wagon. Less than a minute later, carrying the cutting torch and the tanks of gas that feed it, they plunged through the basement garage, the Mechanical Standards Building, into a pitch-dark corridor. Uh, black as night in here, Captain. Yeah. Flash your light, Collins. 
Yes, sir. Can't, can't tell which way this leads to the vault. Uh, uh, look, sir, there's a sort of glow down that way. Yeah? Carlo! McBride! Show a light! This way, Carter! Ah, there's his light. Half that acetylene torch, Hooksy. Yes, sir. Come on. With the gleam of Private Covell's torch to lead them, the rescue captain and Tim Collins move more swiftly along the corridor into the depths below the burning building until they turn a corner and... Hey, Captain, is that you? Yeah, it's me, Smokey. Come up. Sir. Get back to the wagon and bring us a few masks. The new ones. Don't know what we're running into. Smoke, gas, or what have you. Okay, Captain. Move that with a cutting torch. Ah, uh, me, Hooksy Collins. Lend a hand, will you, Smokey? How you doing, kid? What's happening up top, sir? Well, it looks bad on the second floor. Yeah, we're better down here. Uh, no smoke down here. Not yet, anyways. Uh, All right, all set with the torch, Captain Jellybone. All right, stand by, boys. Now, what's the setup inside the vault, Smokehead? The guys are all right. At least he's alive. At least why, he was a few minutes ago. Look, when I tap on the glass with my spanner. Uh, turn your light in there, Collins. Try yes, and turn it in. Yeah. yeah. See that white blur? That's him. He's tapping back. Can't see through this glass. and He can't see us either. Oh, well, good grief. What'll happen when we turn on the torch if you can't warn him to get away from the window? He can't hear so good in there. I tried. Go on, Captain. You try. Can you hear me? What's he trying to say? Oh, who knows? Uh, at least he's got air that... Vault must have air ducts leading into it. All right, ready for the torch, boys. Window must be jammed, or hey, they'd open it from the inside. Lighten the torch. And dust that mixer of gas, Smokey. Now uh, hold up the torch so Lolly can see the flame through the window. Yeah, that yes. white blur on the glass. That's his face, I think. Yes, see. Yeah. yeah. He's moved away from the window. Yeah. Ah, it'd better. This heat from the torch will cut those bars like butter. Let it go, Smokehead. Watch me knife through that iron. Cut every bar, top and bottom. We need room to pull that man through. In short order, the fierce flame of the cutting torch slices through the iron bars, melts, vaporizes, and blasts away enough metal to open a way to safety for the man trapped in the vault. And Captain Jellybone orders... Good enough. Light here, Collins. Yes, sir. Ouch. Ooh, that window's hot. Gotta work fast. I don't know what that heat might do to the man inside. Oh, good grief. The heat made a mess of that glass. Burned right through in places. Yeah. Here, uh, your axe here, Smokehead. Let's pry that window out of the frame. Gangway, Collins. Yeah. Leave me room for my elbow. Up at the top, the top. Wedge the bed of your axe against the... Gotcha, Captain. This will open a rough. Yeah. Hello, inside there. Come on over to the window. Help! Help! I'm going to sink. Sink. It's going to sink. Captain, there's water in that vault. Hey, you're like Collins. Look in there. Oh, good grief. It's flooded. Hey, it's coming from upstairs. That, yeah. that water pouring down from the second floor. Hello, Mr. Lolly. Uh, there he is, Captain. Yeah. There he is, hanging out of those pipes in the corner. Oh, good grief. That water's almost up to the level of the window. Oh, hang on, mister. We're coming in. Give me a leg up to the window, Collins. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't get through. You're too thick in the body, Smokehead. It'll have to be me. All right, Collins. Get out of your boots and coat. Yes, sir. We'll have to swim for it in that vault. Hey, maybe we'll have to swim for it out here. There's water underfoot right here in the car. I thought the safety doors would hold it back. But no door could hold back the tons of water Chief Cody is pouring down into the second floor. Yeah. All right, ready, Captain. I'll push it, bro. Oops, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Man, you're heavier than you look. Can you make it, Collins? Yeah, I'm almost through, sir. Hey, hey give me a shove, Smokey. Hey! Hey, what do you... What do you think I am, a diving beauty? Get that man, Collins. The water is rising. We've got to get out. And as Tim, hardly able to keep his balance in the swirling water that pours into the vault through air pipes, reaches for the helpless Mr. Lawley, Chief Cody, out in the street, is showing concern. Hey, 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 hey. Cubble. Private Cubble. Get down into that basement. Hey, your captain and the rest, it's time to pull out, or I'll have to go after it. I want those men out of there now. Chief Cody, watching the whole progress of the fire from his post of command, sees a sudden turn in events, a change that makes it necessary for Tim Collins and his mates to escape from the basement without delay. But first, as you know, Tim is determined to carry out his mission to rescue Mr. Lawley from his water-filled prison. 
You'll hear how Tim brings Mr. Lawley to safety in our next True to Life episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Bob Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But first, here's a message you ought to hear. And now, Chief Bob Cody with a special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. This is Chief Cody, reminding you that one of the best ways to fight fire is to call for help while the fire is still small. At the first sign of danger, phone an alarm. And then, if you can, put the fire out yourself. Remember, the firemen don't care if the fire is out when they get to the scene. They would rather roll ten times and find the fire already out than have you wait until the blaze grows big and dangerous before you call them. So when you need help, don't hesitate. Just pull that alarm. Well, that's all, and so long for now. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll! <laughs> Let's go! Fire Fighters! Fire Fighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.